A big thank you to Jero for sponsoring today's video on Patreon. Satoru Umizawa versus the Scorpion God, Atraxa, and Lonis. Uh, no lander is obviously one to mulligan. Into a bunch of mana, so yeah, we need a decent amount of mana to get our commander going, so we'll keep on that. Hopefully Limdul's Vault can probably get us into the Time Twister we just saw, actually. And another land for us, only 35 in the deck, but when it comes to ninja commanders, don't seem to struggle getting into the lands, unfortunately. Hopefully won't get too flooded in this game. I remember having those issues with Yuriko back in the day, had to go down to as low as 32 lands, I think it was. Not worthy that there is an Urborg in play, thanks to the Scorpion God, so can tap both the uh, Mana Confluence and the Prismatic Vista for Black Mana. No one casting any spells yet, so we draw for the turn. That is a counter spell. Let's just go Prismatic Vista, and don't think it matters which one we go for. Let's just go for Dmir Signet. First commander of the game, Lonus, Cryptozoologist, into play. Nothing from Atraxa just yet, and it is a Serrated Biskelion. Biskelion? Uh, minus counter on it, and then a minus counter on another creature for a tap. And that is a Mind Flayer for us, so I think it is an Island. And we'll get a Talisman into play, and then uh, maybe just going for Limdul's Vault into something, because I'm not in love with the hand that we've got at the moment. Maybe we just counter something if we're looking for that Time Twister anyway. Kiora's Follower for the Simic player. And then it's the four colours for Atraxa here, so I'm hoping he doesn't try and go for his Commander, because... In all fairness, there is blue mana held up here. Yeah, um, like I said, if I'm going to go aggressive trying to get into the Time Twister, I am just going to go for a um, go for a counter spell onto the Atraxa. And then I'm going to crack the Prismatic Vista, get another island into play as well. Because we cannot tap the Prismatic Vista for blue mana. Erebos Bleak Hearted for the Rakdos player. And deciding not to swing in with the Biskelion. Oh, I was just thinking that we really need to get into some kind of creature that we can ninjutsu things in with, so Ornithopter really good here. Let's go Mana Confluence. We can get our commander into play. Don't have any protection for the commander anymore, unfortunately, but we can go Ornithopter, try and set up with that. And then we've still got the Limdor's Vault held up for refilling our hand with the Time Twister. Adrix and Nev at Twincaster is coming into play for the Simic player, so we'll get twice as many tokens. We see two additional clue tokens coming into play here. Ah, uh, and it is a board wipe from the Atraxa player. A little bit early on the board wipe, I think, but obviously worried about the uh, commander and us cheating something really big into play. Yeah, I mean, next turn we have to assume that we're going to see the Scorpion God, so I would have waited a turn on that. But regardless, everything goes down. Vampiric Tutor during the main for Atraxa as well. So there we are, we see the Scorpion God coming in straight after the board wipe. And we will go for this Limdul's Vault. Oh, and that's lucky, didn't have to take any life. Getting into some decent stuff on the top as well. We obviously know what we're going to draw into with this, thanks to the Vault. Uh, yeah, so uh, we do not wish to pay life. And then it doesn't particularly matter what order we put things in. Yeah, it would be nice to go for the Mind Flayer before the Time Twister so that we could steal this thing away, but I think... As it stands now, we just have to go for Time Twister straight away. Uh, one card will be gained here, a couple here, and a couple for the Simic player, so it's much better for us than it is for our opponents. Everyone tapped out as well, so not likely that we will see a counter spell here. Okay, and getting into the counter spell again. Oh, of course we shuffle, don't we? Yeah, I thought we'd know the um, cards that we get into, but obviously not, because we do shuffle with the Time Twister, forgot about that. Uh, so this can be Misty Rainforest, taps for a black, potentially a blue, unlike the Swamp. And how's about an Arcane Signet as well? And then with the Arcane Signet, uh, how does this give minus counters? Yeah, I mean I suppose they're just going to put a minus counter on the Slither Blade, but they'll have to do it twice, which will cost them 6 mana, so I'm going to hope that this survives any length of time. Potentially set up with our Commander next turn, we can swing in with this and replace it with that, and that will obviously knock the minus counters off it as well. So I'll go for the dual land with Misty Rainforest, so that we give our opponents less chance to react to something, because we are going to want to counter spell. I mean, they can just react to the counter spell anyway, but this is less steps to that, so just holding up the double blue now and passing. 
drew into Thieving Skydiver and the Dragon Lord Silumgar, by the way. A Saw Ring from our opponent, so we can potentially steal that with the Thieving Skydiver. Paying 3 mana into this and getting 2 mana back as well as a 2-1 flyer isn't terrible. Very underplayed card this, I can't understand why people don't play it when... Especially on Magic Online where we used to see fast mana all over the place. And Lonis, Cryptozoologist coming back into play again. Cracking the Misty Rainforest. And following that up with a Coiling Oracle. So getting up to the fourth clue token now, still 6 cards in hand over there. And we see the Atraxa come back into play. I will go easy on the Atraxa player. I'm actually more worried about the Rakdos player at this point because this thing can be very underestimated and yeah, you get punished for underestimating it. We can always steal away the Atraxa with the Silumgar if we want to, but I'm thinking we want to steal away the Scorpion God at the moment. A Bitter Blossom for Rakdos, so yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember how you build Scorpion God typically, but wanting to make tokens apparently. Lightning Greaves in order to uh, in order to protect the Scarab God isn't good. That's so much for going for the Dragon Lord Silumgar onto that then. We can still steal the Atraxa at least. Or we could just steal away the Lightning Greaves with the Thieving Skydiver. That's another plan. Oh, Skull Clamp along with the Bitter Blossoms, pretty good. Not distributing any minus counters as it stands now. Can't put the Skull Clamp on the God either because it does have Shroud. And deciding to hold back. So it's round to our turn. We get some card draw in Signing Blood. Um, we go for our commander first, I think. And then drop a land. We can afford the ninjutsu here, but I wonder if that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I think we just want to hold on to counter spell, so probably best that I just go for the Signing Blood. Saves us doing it next turn. Okay, just clearing two lands off the top is really good. More lands we get into, the more untap land shenanigans that we can go for a bit later on got a few effects that untap lands for us so we'll just have to pass at that unfortunately spent most of our turn getting the commander back out again finned horn elves for the simic player six cards in hand going for activating the cryptozoologist here so sacrificing x clues and pointing that at the atraxa player Getting an Arena Rector out into play, so I'm not sure what Planeswalker they're aiming for, but it does suggest that Atraxa is super friends here, which means it might be Board Wipe Tribal, as we all know and love on this channel. Can't imagine them wanting to go in for a Board Wipe straight after casting their Atraxa though. Captain Sisse looking for a Legendary Permanent, and putting it into hand for a tap. Won't be able to do it until next turn though. Alright, and a Mystic Snake coming from the Simic player, followed by a counter spell from Atraxa, so really wanting to get the Captain Sisse into play. And that's two counter spells down. I'm hoping that the Rakdos player is going to be pointing removal at the Captain Sisse, which is why I'm not countering it here. And if they're doing that, then they're not pointing it at our stuff, obviously. I don't think we've got any legendaries in the deck that I could grab with Captain Sisse myself. Uh, we do have the new Ninja Planeswalker. Not sure how much else we've got though. Jinga Taxius. Maybe some big stuff that we can swing in with in that regard. Anyway, the Atraxa swung in for 4 Commander towards the Simic player as punishment there. And the Rakdos player making it round to his turn again with the board still intact. So Bitter Blossom making some lunch for the Skull Clamp. A Caged Sun with... Yeah, an Urborg in play. Uh not sure I like that, but does it matter if we're going to steal this away next turn? Not too much sack fodder for the Erebos either, only three cards in hand. Uh, I might regret giving them double mana, but we'll allow it. So the clamp going on to the row token, but that of course is not sacrificed because it is now a 2-2, thanks to the Caged Sun turned into a 3-1 by the Skull Clamp, so yeah, perhaps should have waited on this if you wanted to get some card draw. So managing to keep hold of our counter spell during this turn cycle, as well as keeping our commander in play as well. And there we see our friend Prismatic Vista again, so uh, yeah, I think we can just go for the Prismatic Vista, grab an island with that if we want to. Uh, we would want four mana to steal away the Lightning Greaves into the Thieving Skydiver. So it's a four mana Thieving Skydiver going to pinch away the Lightning Greaves. So that has haste now. Don't think I particularly care about swinging in with the Skydiver, so I'll just 
put that onto the Umazawa. And we'll swing in at the Rakdos player. I'd rather the Atraxa didn't start concentrating on us, especially if Legendaries are going to start coming down next turn. So let's swing in to the right. Obviously that is unblocked, so we'll go for Ninjutsu on the Silumgar. Triggers the Satoru, obviously. And we'll look at the top three cards. Uh, getting to the Mind Flare again. There is Deadly Rollick as well. Yeah, I could punish our opponent with a Deadly Rollick. I do like the Mind Flare as well, though, but... There's a chance that we're turning all of our opponents against us here. Although, does it matter if we've got control of their commanders? How many cards do they have in hand? Four, five, and three. Not too many. Yeah, I'll just go for the Deadly Relic here, I think. We can kill off the um, the Captain Sissé if we want to. And then the Silumgar comes into play. Um, we'll steal the Scorpion God away. And now there's every chance that the Rakdos player could get rid of the Silumgar. So, as much as I'd like to protect the Umizawa... I would like to hold my board open even more, so we'll protect the dragon so that we can keep hold of the scorpion god here. And then can't play out the slither blade, but we've got haste anyway. And plus we can ninjutsu with the thieving skydiver and go after things like soul ring and the, uh, and the skull clamp here. This has named black, so if we steal that we can get double mana on all of our lands, which is noteworthy. Does mean putting 8 mana into the thieving skydiver though. A Beast Whisperer from the Simic player now, so creating another clue token. Three cards in hand. And uh, not sure, doesn't look like they're going to play a creature into the Beast Whisperer. So we are letting the Captain Sisse tap down here. We can always counter a really big problem with regards to any Planeswalkers or whatever that they might go for. Also, if they get down a Planeswalker, we could always blow up the Atraxa and then... Uh, hopefully get through past the Captain Sissé, assuming that it's been tapped down at this point, and it has. I'm not entirely sure they're going to actually go for a Planeswalker though. Taking quite a while there, but eventually deciding on Khan's Temporal Sundering, so... So it'll be interesting to see what they target here, because they can bounce a permanent. Uh, going for the bounce, okay, onto the Arena Rector, so once that back. Uh, do we just kill the Captain Sissé and counter that? No, we could just kill the Captain Sissé. Yeah, let's just go for the Sissé now. I think we're playing with fire here. Let's just go after the Sissé and let them have the extra turn. Okay, the Frilled Mystic coming into play as well. So, uh, Sissé going down. The Frilled Mystic countering the Khan's Temporal Sundering, you would think. Um, and the Beast Whisperer drawing a card from the Frilled Mystic. So, that comes into play. Makes a clue token. And yeah, it looks as though the Frilled Mystic is going on the Khan's Temporal Sundering, which makes total sense. So waiting on killing off the Captain Sissé paid off for us there. We got a couple of cards out of our opponent's hands, including a counter spell and an extra turn card. We managed to waste the Atraxa player's turn as well, so pretty risky, but did pay off for us. And now Atraxa going back in at the Simic player. Really keen to get back the Arena Rector, I think. Um, if they take out the Simic player, then Arena Rector will just go into exile, as I understand it, so... It's not as though taking them out is going to get that back for them. Pristine Talisman coming into play for the Rakdos player. And obviously getting another 2-2 Fairy Token. It's not worthy that they will be able to go crazy with Skull Clamp and Fairy Tokens if we do steal this off them at some point in the next few turns. Only three cards in their hand at the moment. Can sacrifice to the Erebos though. Not worthy that if we uh, try Ninjutsu or swing in with this and they're worried about Ninjutsu, they can kill it off with the Erebos, so... Yeah, we're going to have to be careful about where we swing in. Probably go over with this to the Simic player. 3-1 comes in at us, first of all. Probably trying to encourage us to kill off the Thieving Skydiver by throwing that in the way. But we'll encourage them to use their mana to do that. Well, there's the Damnation. So, uh, the second board wipe, I think that is. We will go for the counter spell on that. <laughs> and the Rakdos player scooping, because why not? Okay, getting to a Triton Shore Stalker. Do not have the haste from the Lightning Greaves anymore, thanks to the early scoop from our opponent, so uh, that could really have screwed us up. Luckily, we can still get through with the Thieving Skydiver, I think. Yeah, there's no reach over here, so we'll have to go in this direction. So, play the Flooded Strand. And we can swing both of these in, both these flyers in towards the Simic player. And do some ninjutsu shenanigans here. So, blockers declared. Not worth that the Urborg went down as well, which I forgot about, so these don't tap for mana anymore. 
throw down the slither blade and bounce yeah bounce the dragon first that triggers the uh, sataru and now we've got peregrine drake so we could do some stuff with that this turn yeah we'll put the peregrine drake into our hand others go on the bottom that was some removal and reanimate and then we'll ninjutsu the peregrine drake into play and replace it with the or replace the thieving skydiver with the peregrine drake ready to steal something back with that peregrine drake will untap some lands for us so that means that we can do some more ninjutsu shenanigans let's grab the uh, dragon lord silumgar again bounce the drake back to our hand this time and this time we will steal the Atraxa from the Atraxa player, try and get them to scoop apparently. And this will be only 4 damage on the Simic player. But we do have an unblockable in play. Uh, if the unblockable goes down we might struggle because we don't want to bounce Atraxa back to hand. But a board wipe will get rid of an unblockable. Hmm. Yeah, not sure if we should play out the Shore Stalker here into a board wipe. I'm imagining the Atraxa might have a board wipe in order to get the Atraxa back and wipe the board, so we'll leave it there and the Triton Shore Stalker can come into play on another turn. Proliferate, not doing anything for us, we just hold back the Atraxa as a good blocker. Okay, getting into another Lightning Greaves potentially. Our opponent does know that we have the Thieving Shore Stalker, or um, Thieving Skydiver, I should say. Going for that onto their commander. Not worthy that there's an Alchemist Refuge over here. Three clue tokens so far. Looks like they're going for the ability on that. And yeah, grabbing a Mana Crypt. So I might be able to do even more shenanigans next turn. Bringing the Thieving Skydiver into play for four mana again to steal this. It swings in. And then we can bounce it back down with Ninjutsu. Bring in the Peregrine Drake. Which untaps mana to cast this again. And maybe steal the Sol Ring. Anyway, the 1-1 one, one Coiling Oracle in at Atraxa along with the Arena Rector and the Beast Whisperer. I think it would be a good idea to gang up on Atraxa at this point. Most likely to cast a bunch of board wipes and at the highest life total at the moment. Search for Glory is searching for a Legendary or Saga. Putting it into hand. Oh, an Oko, Thief of Crowns. Uh, might be able to get around that if we have Ninjutsu stuff. Although, yeah... It'll take away the Umizawa from us, won't it? Which I dare say is the plan here. Yep, so switching off the Umizawa, nothing we can do about that. No sack outlets or anything. Turns our commander into a 3-3 and no more ninjutsu shenanigans for us. Then swords to plowshares onto the Atraxa, so... Yeah, I mean they could really have done it onto the Dragonlord Silumgar. They should have done it on the Dragonlord Silumgar. It gets rid of a creature and it gives them their Atraxa back. This way they have to recast it. And we keep our dragon, so... Yeah, not quite understanding how the Silumgar works there, unfortunately for them. Lone is still holding up priority over there, which is noteworthy, so maybe just holding up something for the Alchemist Refuge. Two cards in hand. We are going to crack the Flooded Strand and the Vista for a couple of basics. Okay, an Infernal Grasp. We could destroy our own creature with that if we wanted to. Let's throw out a land. I want to go for the Thieving Skydiver before anything else. Unfortunately, getting into the Lightning Greaves a turn too late. They know that we're going to go after something of theirs with the Skydiver because these are the only legal targets. There's nothing on the Atraxa's side of the field. Allowing it in anyway, so we assume that they don't have anything else. Yeah, and we've had our deck switched off by our dear friend Oko, unfortunately, so I think we're just swinging in to the Oko and Atraxa player. If they've got some other means of removal in order to protect their Oko, I doubt they'll use it anyway because they've got the Simic player to survive through yet, but we'll encourage them to use it on the Umizawa because we're taking a Shroud creature in over there as well. So they can save Oko here, but they have to give us back the uh, Sataru. And then I'll just swing in at Atraxa as well to show the Simic player where I'm looking. So I think we're just holding on to Infernal Grasp. I might have to blow up the Beast Whisperer if I'm worried my opponent's going to chain off. Um, but best case scenario, we get rid of our own commander and replay it for what will be seven, I think. Actually, could have done with moving the Greaves onto the dragon here. Completely forgot to move the Lightning Greaves, but we do have control of that. Didn't do anything with the Alchemist Refuge, so... Still in top deck mode, still in two cards, so I think they just played a land this turn. <laughs> a Thassa Deep Dwelling. Uh, so how is this worded? 
Whenever you cast a creature spell, not on entry, so... Likely just getting the card draw from Coiling Oracle. Yeah, nothing we can do about Thassa, unfortunately. Noteworthy with Thassa Deep Dwelling that you exile a creature you control and then bring it back in under your control, so... If you've got something that you've stolen with something like a Dragonlord Silumgar and you're worried about losing it, then you could flicker your opponent's creature with this and you would keep hold of it even upon losing the Silumgar. Which I don't think is something that's going to be relevant to the Simic player, but something to bear in mind. Ha, <laughs> now a Swiftfoot Boots. One card in their hand. And the Swiftfoot Boots going on to the Thassa. There's nothing we can do about this anyway because it's indestructible. We've got a 5 Toughness creature held back for blocks, so it might just be the Thassa that comes in towards us, but... I'd be concentrating on a Traxxer personally, now that my commander's been switched off. If we could steal this Thassa away at some point, it'd be really good to... Grab the Swiftfoot Boots, and then... Yeah, it's going to take too long because of our commander, unfortunately, but it would be really good to steal the Swiftfoot Boots away, and then steal away the Thassa so that we could do those shenanigans with the Dragonlord Silumgar. Anyway, what's this? Rise and Shine. Each non-creature artifact you control becomes a 0-0 zero, zero with four plus counters on it. That will make the Swiftfoot Boots fall off. Yeah, and we're seeing that here. The Swiftfoot Boots falls off. Is this until end of turn? No, it's just plus counters, and that just happens forever now. So they can't actually equip the Swiftfoot Boots now that it's a creature, which means they've just opened up the Thassa Deep Dwelling for us. Although, is it still a creature? Yeah, I think it is still a creature. They've got Devotion of 5, so yeah, 5 Devotion means that it is still a creature. We can potentially steal that. Swinging in these three at the Atraxa will be a total of 6 damage. Might see a board wipe from Atraxa yet, unfortunately. And then the Thassa is going to flicker something. Oh, I think they swung in with the uh, Mana Crypt as well, maybe. I don't know if they tapped that for mana this turn, but down to 33 Atraxa goes regardless. And they are keeping this indefinitely now. And they are flickering the Arena Rector. I think they already had permanent control of this, so... I don't think that makes much difference, but it does untap it, and it is a good blocker that we might not want to swing into. Here we see the Atraxa again. So pretty much tapping out into that, one mana left up. And just deciding to scoop, so... <laughs> there we go. Oh, and it actually went through our entire turn. Oh, that's really annoying. Early scoops totally screwed me, so... What I was going to do was Infernal Grasp onto my commander so that I could actually recast it for 7 this turn. I think that might have completely screwed me over there. Oh, God. Right, let's see what we're drawing into. Fierce Guardianship. Oh, that's really annoying. Well, we'll just have to do it now. Said it a million times, but that's why you don't scoop early, because you're screwing your opponents over, potentially. Not that you care, because... Not that you care, because as long as you're not in a game you don't want to be in, then it doesn't matter, right? So we are now one mana shy of the ninjutsu, and what we were going to do here is ninjutsu out the Silumgar in place of the Peregrine Drake. This would have untapped the lands, and then we could have swapped them back round again, got the ETB on the Silumgar, and stolen this away. And that would have been, yeah, a pretty flashy turn for us. Um, I don't think we're playing around board wipes now, so let's go for the Triton Shore Stalker. Could potentially hold on to that for when we eventually steal the Beast Whisperer, but... Yeah, I don't think it particularly matters at this point, so... Let's... Protect. They've got no cards in hand. Yeah, I think we just need to protect the Silumgar. Worst case scenario, we have to replay our commander. I suppose I should have swung in with these two creatures as well and lightning bolted them. And it's just an Arcane Signet off the top, so casting that. Okay, deciding to attack with some big creatures here. I think we're just going to have to take the damage. This is 10. Ugh, yeah, that's a pretty big chunk. But our opponent's in top deck mode, so I think we're just going to have to go down to 20 here and keep hold of as many creatures as possible. Oh, actually, dirt. Should have blocked with the 3-5 there. Could have saved ourselves for damage. That's a bad block. Now, Thassa going to flicker something. It is, of course, the Coiling Oracle. Shouldn't be able to flicker anything at all, because we should have control of the Thassa now, so I'm really hoping that doesn't cost me the game. Another unblockable in Miscloaked Herald. Uh, yeah, we just go through two attacks here, I think. So I'll just swing in with these two, and then we'll Ninjutsu in the Peregrine Drake, bounce the Silumgar back to hand for it, get the card advantage from Satoru. And that is a Jinga Taxius, which means we're going to be drawing a hell of a lot of cards, so... Yeah, I think we have to go for Jinga Taxius there. Okay, our opponent going for 
a potential creature in response here. We do have... Yeah, we've got through for attacks now. Okay, failed to find there by the looks of it. So we tap down some lands in response to the Peregrine Drake, ready to untap them. Let that trigger resolve. And then go Dragon Lord Silumgar. Return the Peregrine Drake back to hand. Steal their Thassa. All right, they decide to scoop there. The plan is that we steal the Thassa. Um, we keep the Dragon Lord Silumgar in play. And then what we do is, I think we go Peregrine Drake onto this again. Get this back into our hand and untap lands. And then bounce the Peregrine Drake that will be attacking and unblocked back to our hand and go for Jingataxius into play. And that means at the end of the turn that we draw into our 10 cards. Our opponent can't keep any cards in hand, although the uh, card draw seems to be minimal at the moment anyway, unfortunately. So yeah, unfortunately didn't get to see it and uh, had some players scoop on us, but that's pretty much the gist of what we want to do with this Satoru Umizawa list. So if you want to have a look at that, then the list is in the description as always. Hopefully you all enjoyed it regardless. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.